who here is a Bachelor of Environmental Science student? Pop your hand up. Okay, majority of you, great. Who here is studying the Bachelor of Science? And a few of you. Okay, excellent. Um, all right, while we're, while we're doing questionnaire, questionnaire, who's enrolled in Chem 1A, Chemistry 1A this semester? I'm sorry for your terrible choice. No, no, that's good. Um, that, that's a great unit, foundational unit, need to do it in first semester. Who's enrolled in ComSci, Communication in Science? Most of you, again, I'm really sorry, I'm your lecturer for that, so we'll, we'll get to know each other next week. And who's enrolled in Concepts in Biology? Most of you, excellent. Good. Well, in that case, I have the pleasure of introducing to you the unit convener for Concepts in Biology, Dr. Katie Cohen, who's down here. Did you want to say? Hello and a few things. Hi. <laughs> so you will get to know me as well this semester. It's lovely to see your faces. I can't wait for everyone to come back on campus next week. Um, so now you have a face to the name. Please feel free to email me at any time, drop in if you have any questions or any issues because um, it's can be pretty daunting your first semester. So we are here, Adrian also, awesome. Um, so we're here to answer any questions you have. All right, thank you. Great. Thank you, Katie. And so for those of you who are in the virtual room, Katie is your moderator uh, for this session as well. Um, young man at the back, would you like to come down and say hello? I hope you've registered for this session. This is our head of school, Professor Ter Tariq Azaz. Um, would you like to come and say hello as well? Sorry. Would you like to say hello? Yeah. Thank you. Can I ask you to stand? Sorry. Thank you, Adrian, and welcome everyone. It's great to see you all face to face at last, and uh, we are very welcome, and we're looking forward to seeing you around campus. And uh, you would be in, a, in great hands. So, um, so we are very proud of our teaching, first year teaching team. So. Um, Enjoy and um, welcome again. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank Just you, Terry. Thank you. All right. These, I'm going to warn you, these are going to be slightly dry slides we're going to present today. Um, they're written perhaps by someone who didn't realize that uni is terribly exciting. This day is where it all starts for you. This is where the world will, will open up. So rather than bombarding with you, you with too much information on how everything works and where, um, where everything is, Instead, I'm going to aim to try and show you how you get that information when you need it. Does that make sense? So this, I, I will pop these slides and probably the recording of this talk as well up on our shared Canvas site um, so you can access it later if you need to come back and say, hey, what was that phone number? Who was that person I need for that? What's the email address for this? Okay, so all that information there is in, the, in these slides and you'll be able to access them again later. As I begin, though, I would like to acknowledge the Ngunnawal people who are the tradition, traditional custodians of the lands upon which the University of Canberra is situated and the lands upon which I live and I work. I wish to acknowledge their continuing culture and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging and extend that respect to any First Nations people who are in the room or um, listen to this through the virtual room or may later listen to this uh, recording. The first thing I'm going to play for you is a welcome from the Dean of the Faculty of Science and Technology. Um, she's keeping very COVID safe and doing it via video. So I will um, just play that now. Hopefully everything, the audio comes through the virtual room as well. I'm going to guess that there are meant to be some peaceful bass and panpipe music in the background. So we are around the main faculty of this beautiful 
sports, schools, and science, and information technology systems together into a single platform to work on solving the world problems. We are committed to experimental learning to ensure we are ready, world ready, and future ready graduates. We may gain the skills to take a part to the professional practice classes, a research project, or even workshopping with your peers to solve more world problems. Our science graduates rank in the top four national programs. Our computing and information systems graduates rank in the top five national for full time programs. Our staff are committed to sharing their knowledge, experience, and professional connections. In some cases, our staff bring in the most working industry of government to give the real world perspective to the material they teach. Now, for those studying with us, we hope that you will experience some of our world class teaching and research workers as you gain hands on experience. We're an inclusive faculty and we embrace diversity, and as such, we actually have a new um, UC society for living in STEM. So, please make sure that you get a long age and learn the most about living in STEM. Finally, we have some faculty values, four core values. But we expect our staff and students to, to um, adhere to. And they are our people, so I really do assume a staff member. We really value your contributions to the faculty. We um, respect each other, we act in integrity, and we collaborate. So if you're doing a group project, make sure you've got a library in your So I'd just like to finally just welcome you to the faculty and hope that you have a great view. And remember that we are here to support you. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Janine. Do you need to thank speakers in absence? I don't know absence, I'm not sure. Oh, let's not do it again. <laughs> okay. Um, first of all, a little bit about me. Um, I always think it's nice to know to whom you're talking. Um, my name is Adrian. Uh, that's not me. That's not a picture of me. That's that's actually a snail. First lesson in biology. Uh, that is, in fact, my finger, though. Uh, this photo was covering some of my PhD research. It was in the Canberra Times. I was very excited about it at the time. Uh, my colleagues contacted me the next day and instead of commenting on my research or asking me about it, commented that I have quite poor cuticles. So I'm aware of that now. Thank you very much. You don't need to tell me. Uh, that little snail is a freshwater invader called Patama pegus antipodarum. Try spinning around three times, having a hard lemonade and then saying that. Um, my re if you're interested in my research or any other academics research, feel free to go up and talk to them about it. Um, mine personally, if you're having trouble sleeping, great remedy for that. Uh, I teach into various lectures, uh, sorry, various units across first year, so communication and science, concepts in biology, data analysis, introductory physics. So we'll get to know each other before the end of this year, I'm sure. I'm also the program director, um, well, a program director in science, and I specifically take care of our environmental science students, uh, as well as forensic studies students. If you're studying the Bachelor of Science, but you're taking environmental science majors or forensic majors, then that includes you as well. Um, I'm always happy to chat. Um, my door is open, except for when it's closed. However, I do tend to be busy running around between all those different units, uh, so it's best to email first. And our first point of contact is this email address here, and this is our faculty education team. Uh, they'll help you out, and I'll go through in a minute what they can help you with and what they might escalate uh, to me, and at which point we get to meet each other and have a chat in a bit more depth about your course. So in terms of contacts within the faculty, this is sort of uh, um, over... Um, that's what I'm looking for. This is this is lays out the kind of hierarchy, I guess, uh, within within the faculty. So we have our executive dean that you just met via video, Professor Deacon, and then underneath uh, Janine we have our associate dean of education. Uh, sorry, associate deans of education. I don't know where the plural comes there. Um, who look uh, have oversight over all of our courses in science and technology. Um, our Associate Dean of Research and Innovation has a similar portfolio, but for the research side uh, activities in the faculty. And you've just met Professor Azaz, um, who is our Head of School of Science. Before too long, you will also meet our first year science student coordinator, if you haven't already, Michael Sidney. 
He teaches into um, communication and science. He teaches into communication, uh, sorry, concepts in biology, as well as a couple of other units. You can contact him about those units, but also any other issues you might have about settling into the first year um, routine. I mentioned that I'm a program director. The other program director on the top right there is Nicole Beard. Um, I mentioned my portfolio is more around environmental science and forensic studies. Uh, Nicole's is more biomedical and medical science. However, if you find that um, you're struggling to get in contact with me or you don't like me very much or whatever it might be, um, Nicole will be very happy to chat to you as well. There, holy moly, there's a lot of information on this slide. Okay, um, in communication in science, don't you dare present me with a slide like this. Uh, I guess breaking it down, this is one of those slides that's here for your information to come back to later. The takeaways here are that Student Central over in Building 1 is your first stop, okay, your uh, first point of contact for any inquiry you might have that is related to administration of your course, your fees, whatever it might be. Um, if you need to know something about your ID cards, if you don't know, have one already, head over there to Building 1, Student Central, get yourself a ticket, get in line and, and they'll be able to help you out. They, can, they might send you our way uh, if you need more specific help about units or something academic, but either way, they're the first, first port of call. In the bottom right hand corner there, popped up a little message about consent matters. There are a few different um, additional modules in addition to the units that you'll more formally study through, through the faculty. Um, a few modules that you'll need to complete before, you, before the end of your course. And consent matters is one of those, and it's obviously a very important issue. In terms of um, specific advice about your course, your unit selection each semester, then your first point of contact is our course advice team. Right, so these, um, this is provided by representatives from our faculty education team. The times are available up there. Uh, you can also, when, once these slides are posted, you can come back to them and you can use that link to find the, at the bottom there to find the most recent information about how you can contact the course advice team. But they'll tell you about what courses, what units you need to be doing this semester in order to build up your majors. Talk a little bit about what a major is in a minute. Um, or, and in, in order to satisfy all the different little requirements you need to tick off in order to complete your course in three or four years time. In terms of communicating with us, we will rely on Canvas, which I'll introduce you to in a minute, and your email. To be honest, I can't really underline this, um, the serious, seriousness of this, uh, the strictness of this um, too much. That, and that is because if we have emailed you something or posted it on Canvas, we have the expectation that you've read it, that you've understood it. Um, if you don't read it and you don't understand it, that's when you contact us. So I personally don't email individual students too often. There tends to be announcements through Canvas. However, if you do want to make contact with us and you want to discuss you know, your uh, progression within a unit, or maybe you have to give us a medical certificate because you've been unwell or something like that, it needs to come from your UC email address. So please make sure that you have that set up and working and ready to go before the start of next week. All right, what is Canvas? What is this thing I've mentioned so many times? Who's been on Canvas already? Oh, excellent. You have? Okay, very good. Um, so you should be, you will have an individual Canvas page for each of your units. So you can see that um, this is fresh. I did this 10 minutes before I walked here. Uh, that I'm enrolled in communication in science on the right there and concepts in biology this semester. But I also have a couple of other things that I, I am already enrolled in, such as the transition and orientation port portal. Anyone in the virtual room obviously already has that, is enrolled in that. Hopefully you're all enrolled in the science School of Science course advice and information canvas site as well. These canvas sites are effectively our information hubs. This is where we distribute all updated information about your assessments, about classes, about readings, about everything you can imagine to do with your unit and your course. You will also see on the left there that I am enrolled in the academic integrity module. 
This like consent matters is an additional module you will need to complete before you're done here at UC. Uh, good news is those of you who are doing ComSci, I require you to do it as part of the unit and so you will have that ticked off before you even finish semester. I think that will do. Oh, actually, I'm going to be the annoying person who flicks back to a slide and keeps thinking, oh, I have to add something else. And that is, your Canvas site has all of your um, dates for assessments uh, and various other requirements you need to fulfill for units. It is where you submit all your assessments. Um, and it is, uh, as I say, very much the information hub. However, the unit outline is a separate document that you can access through Canvas that acts a little bit like the contract between you as students and us as conveners saying, hey, I expect this of you and here is what you can expect of me this semester. Okay, so make sure you read through that unit outline by enrolling in a particular unit. You're kind of saying, I've read that unit outline, I understand it and I agree to what's within it. Okay? Uh, I mentioned the School of Science course advice and information Canvas site. Um, this is a good place to head to if you are seeking course advice and you might think you just have quite a generic question to start off with. Because there's FAQs up there, there's generic study plans. So most of you um, in environmental science, you actually have a pretty prescribed study plan, especially for the first year or so of units we expect you to take. Bachelor of Science is all about flexibility. You'll be in a totally different boat. You get to um, build your own course effectively. Um, but you will still be able to go onto this information site and see how to put together those components that sum up to a complete um, course. I'm going to do it again. Flick back and say one more thing. And that is that um, one extra thing that I've taken to a posting on the School of Science course of and Information Campus site is uh, announcements about volunteer opportunities. I find that environmental science students are possibly our most engaged students on camp, campus, and they want opportunities to volunteer. Who, who would like to go out and do some plant, tree planting or monitoring of Rosenberg goannas or something like that? I'm assuming that's a hand up on the virtual room saying so as well. Okay, so you'll hear a little bit more about the Environmental Science Society in a minute, but in addition to that, uh, we also post in, uh, opportunities for volunteering through this Canvas site, okay? So keep your eyes peeled for those announcements. There are various specialised services across uh, UC. I won't go into detail on these. Just quickly mention that Careers UC um, is not just for people at the end of their course. I was talking to one of their representatives the other day and their aim is to embed themselves from day one in your course. And indeed, you'll uh, meet some of their representatives in communication and science within a few weeks. However, if you need help with your CV or you want to look for, um, again, volunteer opportunities, or placements or internships, or you want to know what skills you need in order to uh, be most attractive to employers when you finish, go see Careers UC. They have a wonder of resources and they can help you out. Um, so point there was it's from day one, you should be thinking about Careers UC, using the services of Careers UC. Inclusion and engagement are for students who have some ongoing health condition. Um, they, are they are very confidential. And so as academics, the way in which we engage with inclusion and engagement is that they send us um, uh, what's called a reasonable adjustment plan for students that they have registered. And those um, reasonable adjustment plans tell, say things like, hey, if this student's uh, student asks, they have some reason that you need to consider giving them an allowance for an extension on an assignment or something like that. Okay? We know nothing about what's going on behind the scenes, that's between you and I and E, um, but they can work, we can work with them to do what, um, to provide conditions that are more amenable to, to your successful completion of our units. Uh, international students, um, there is a dedicated support services for international students. Likewise, the Ngunnawal Centre is dedicated to supporting Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students. Medical and counselling, they this is primarily a service for students and a bulk bill, so I suggest you um, make use of their services while you're here. That includes counselling, um, I'll point out, as well as the traditional kind of medical services. And student welfare, you probably go and see student welfare if you have an academic grievance or some pressing financial financial matter that actually impacts your studies. 
Okay, the t I'm not gonna go to the next slide, I'm gonna say another thing before I click slides. And that is the two, two things that aren't up there are your SciTech education team. I mentioned them in terms of course advice. If you're worried about a unit, go see them. Another point of contact that is super important and not up there or in any of these slides is the academic staff. Academics and universities I know have a reputation of being stuffy, being aloof. That is not the case here, okay? So most of us are actually human. Please do feel free to approach us, make use of us, um, come walk down the corridors and say hello to the people that haunt those, not haunt, that's scary, uh, that occupy those offices. We're very happy to chat and help you out. You might find at some point as your studies progress that you are in need of topping up particular skills. You may even find that your lecturer in feedback or an assignment refers you to study skills. Um, this is not an insult and it's not necessarily that your work is deficient in some way, it's just some complementary skills that you might like to work on. So study skills, I think they're mainly based in the library over in Building 8. They are the most popular uh, services they provide are in maths and statistics help. Um, English um, are probably the most common uh, reasons that we refer people to study skills. But they also offer other services. They can teach you how to use referencing, uh, referencing managers, or actually just how to reference. They can teach you how to study better. And so there's lots of general skills as well that you can use them for to help um, build, up, build up those skills. What else have we got on here? I mentioned the Academic Integrity mo Module. PALS, okay, so the Peer Assisted Learning Sessions, PALS. These are great um, groups. What they do is they're run by students that have taken your unit in a previous year and aced it. So Concepts in Biology has a PALS session uh, where students that have taken Concepts in Biology last year or the year before got an HD, aced it, uh, friendly students, we know that they can talk to people. They will run weekly sessions, sometimes more, more often, uh, to help current students through the unit. Okay, it's a great resource. Now, they're not your unit coordinator, they're not your lecturer, they're not your tutor, they don't have all the answers, but they can help run study set. They will run study sessions to help you as a work group work towards solutions. Um, Likewise, I have one for introductory physics. Chem 1A certainly has them. So most of your first few units will have these peer-assisted learning sessions. Um, they're very friendly. They're in Building 6. I will show you where Building 6 is in just a minute. MASH, I mentioned maths and stats help before. Um, I suspect it's called study-osity, but I always call it studiosity. That's how it looks like it's written to me. This is a resource that um, is accessible through your Canvas site and I suspect is underutilized. Uh, I believe it is a service that UC is subscribed to on your behalf where you can submit drafts and they'll provide feedback on those drafts. They're not gonna do your homework for you, but they, um, they, you can get feedback quite quickly from that service. Do you have much experience with Studiosity, Katie? Okay. Worth checking out. There is also this UC Student Mentor Program, and I guess in a way similar to PALS, it is students that have been here for a while who can help you out with easing into that transition into, into university. I suspect, uh, sorry, I encourage you to look them up uh, and get a UC uh, Student Mentor. If nothing else, looks like they wear cool white t-shirts, um, which is rather refreshing. So they're just current undergrad students like yourself that can just help with that transition. I mentioned the Student Resource Centre. This is uh, over in Building 6 on the ground floor, and this is just a space dedicated for your study. Obviously, you'll be making use of the study spaces in the library as well, um, but this is one that I believe is open to all UC students but tends to be dominated by science students and perhaps that's, and technology students, and that's because perhaps it's over in our area back on campus. So we're in building two at the moment. The entrance, this attractive door in the top left-hand photo, uh, is at the tip of that arrow in building six. So you should find it once you um, have a little walk around campus. Uh, that, so that's study spaces where you can meet with your, your group. Looks like you can eat in that room as well, according to these photos. 
Um, there's areas to relax, areas to study, and there's a wealth of textbooks on the wall there that you can make use of while you're in the resource center. I mentioned student societies before. Uh, Professor Deacon, um, our dean, mentioned the UC Supporting Women in STEM Society. There is also some more discipline specific societies. That doesn't mean that you can only join the Environmental Science Society if you're an environmental science student or forensic studies, uh, sorry, Forensic Students Association for Forensic Studies students. Um, they're open to everyone, okay? so please feel free to join. Uh, the idea with these societies is they provide extra opportunities, so like volunteering, but seminars as well. Um, they foster interactions within our UC campus, so the, among students obviously, but also outside. So we typically have workshops run by people um, in industry, our government partners who can come in and run, and run workshops and seminars. They promote volunteering opportunities as well as paid internships and things like that. Do you want to take the opportunity now to come down and speak? Um, this is Maddie, uh, who's the president of our UC Environmental Science Society. Oh, just Hello. Uh, yeah, as, as uh, Adrian introduced, I'm Maddie. Um, I am also a third year student uh, studying environmental science. Um, so, you know, for one, this is the beginning of an awesome adventure for all of you guys. Um, and you're in good hands with Adrian and Katie here. Um, they helped me a lot during my first year. They made me feel supported. And like I had somebody that I could talk to when I had struggles with uh, those first year units. Um, so yeah, as I said, uh, UC Environmental Science Society. Um, this is my first year as president. Um, and with that, I have a lot of events uh, kind of lined up. Um, we are doing a few panel nights um, with uh, researchers from the university here, as well as some outside uh, kind of researchers coming in, where you guys get to ask questions, ask how they got there, like what they do, and get a bit more of an idea of the multitude of opportunities that are out there after you finish your degree. Um, I'm very lucky where through my kind of interactions with all of the um, academics here, um, I actually have been working in the environmental genetics lab over the summer. and it's amazing being able to have that hands-on experience, um, which is something that the uh, Environmental Science Society wants to kind of help promote with our students, is getting you those connections, helping you find um, people in those niche interests um, that you'll figure out. <laughs> um, we've also done tree planting events, volunteering. Um, we are currently uh, organizing our first ever uh, science uh, SciTech ball at the end of this year, which will be amazing. Um, we're starting it with a big bang, um, so it's going to be a big, big event. Um, we are also in the process of uh, organising a large interstate trip, so a week-long volunteering trip uh, where you get some hands-on ecological fieldwork kind of experience. Uh, and yeah, I'd love to have as many people kind of join up um, and be a part of that. So, it's you. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much. In terms of signing up. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's on uh, on the UCX uh, page. Um, we also have a Facebook page, which is up on there, and um, there is a link to the UCX sign up page on the, that Facebook page. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. So, for those in the virtual room who didn't hear that last bit in terms of signing up, you can do so through the UCX page, or best best to find these slides after this talk and uh, use the links embedded here. All right, let's talk a little bit about what is involved this semester and this year and the next couple of years, in fact. Um, again, I'm going to try and try and move quickly. You can do this sign if I, if I get uh, bogged down at any point. So this is the typical structure of a year. We've got a semester one and a semester two, and squeezed in between we have a shorter winter term. Now, we don't have an awful lot of uh, winter term units in science, just some very, so a couple of units right at the end of third year. Uh, however, you might find that you end up taking uh, mathematics, ma mathematical methods during winter term. I know that's offered then. Or perhaps uh, you might take a unit from another faculty during that winter term. So that is, that is actually an option for you at some point. Semester is 13 weeks, uh, well, short. Um, and I say that because it's like a roller coaster. We get on in week one, you blink, and it's week 13. Uh, each of those 13 week semesters is followed by a two week examination period. Now note that even though it says examination period, you might have exams, but you will also have other assessments due during that two week period. So I would 
firmly put aside 15 weeks for your semester before you're really wrapped up. In the middle of semester, week eight is a class-free period. Okay, so it's one week long. Um, as Bachelor of Environmental Science or Environmental Science interested units, you'll often have field trips and so on during that mid-semester break. So it's not so much a break as a class-free period. Um, all right, the, all the dates for your specific units will be on your uh, unit outline and Canvas sites. In terms of building your course, I've been throwing around these ideas of units, majors, um, degrees. Let's have a quick show of hands. Who feels confident they know what a unit is? Who feels confident they know what a major is? Who feels confident they know what a minor is? Who feels confident that they're at university? Doesn't that feel good? All right, so let's start from the very beginning. We'll go through this quick. Oh, what's this? Who knows what these are? I mean, it says SI in huge letters in the middle of it. There are SI units. Who wants to bravely tell me what each of these seven units are? These are our base units from which we can derive all other units. The seven base units. Meters and kilograms, yep. Mole, yep. Kelvin, which is for temperature, yep. Little s. Seconds. What's capital A? Who's done some oh. physics or engineering? Love it, good guess. Not this one. So it's a unit. No, because we, so you, thank you for pointing that out. The idea with base units is you can build other units from it. So acceleration, we talk about meters per second per second. So you can see how we use these base units to build into other units. Capital A is for ampere. Does anyone remember what that's for? Yep, current, okay, electrical current. What's CD? This is the one that people trip up on. Okay, CD is candela, which is so luminous intensity. Right, so you talk about can it's it's um, candle power you might have heard of is the same idea. I always found it funny that you talk about lighthouses in terms of their candle power, the equivalent number of candles you can put in it. Right. So anyway, that's not the sort of unit I'm talking about when I say unit. I'm talking instead about specific subjects. So your maths methods, that's a unit. Your concepts in biology, your first system science, these are units. They are usually one semester long. In science, they are also one semester long. If you take a unit from another faculty, you might find that you end up doing a year-long unit. Um, a semester-long unit is usually worth three credit points. So when we build up your degree, we don't actually talk about you have to take X units, although for most of you it's 24. Um, instead, we talk about three credit points. Sorry, we talk about credit points. So 24 units, three credit points each, 24 times three, You've got to complete 72 credit points in order to complete your course. Each unit has a name, sure, like mathematical methods, but it also has a code. So 577, we know it's math methods. 483, it's concepts in biology. So. In terms of how much we expect you to work, one unit, so three credit points, you should put aside roughly 150 hours of work per semester. Okay, so if you are taking four units a semester, then we are expecting you to do about 600 hours of work across a semester. Um, so as I say, for a typical unit in semester one or semester two, you've got four contact hours per week. So in biology, you will have uh, one lecture for one hour, you'll have one workshop for one hour, and one practical for two hours each week. So one, one, two, you have four hours contact per week. However, in addition to that, we expect you to do somewhere between four and out, four to eight independent study hours per week. So that's working on your assignments, doing your readings, getting, getting ready for class. If you are here full time, then you are doing four units, so 12 credit points per semester, as I mentioned. Um, part time is effectively anything, anything less than that. Well, I'm sorry, it's not actually. Part time is actually less than three units, okay, so one or two units. Semester. All right, what are majors and minors? Once again, I apologize for the um, not irrelevant but uh, confusing image. A minor, we'll get to in a second. A major is a specialization, if you like. So, all of you are doing environmental science, Bachelor of Environmental Science, you will be completing two majors one in applied ecology, one in water science. 
Okay, and so they are your specializations, if you like. They're a set of related units that build upon one, other, one another in a, spe a specific area. So there's usually, not always, but usually six units that make up a major. The rule for a major is that they cross different years, so first year, second year, third year, and you need to do at least one third year unit okay, in order to complete that major. Now, I just said third year unit, and it says level three up there. Strictly speaking, um, we should talk about level one, level two, level three units. And obviously they get higher as you progress through, um, through your studies. However, you will hear, hear it referred to level three unit is a third year unit. Not strictly true, but think of them interchangeably, that's fine. A minor is of course a major with a flattened third, but for those of us who don't study music, it is a set of sequential or related units, like a major, but it's shorter. Okay, so four units instead of six. Those of you who are in Bachelor of Science, you will be required to complete a minor as well as two majors. I'm going to take you through, <clears throat> I guess, a little bit of the structure of the university. And so we'll start with, well, you're at, you're at the university now. Let's not talk about that. But we'll talk about the faculty and then the School of Science within it and then your course within that, within the school. So Faculty of Science and Technology composed of two different schools. There is a Faculty of Technology, which I've chosen the image in the bottom right hand corner to represent technology. I've got no idea what they do. I assume it's something like that. Um, you know your scientists because you belong in that top left hand photo. They are looking at blue liquids. They are staring down microscopes. That guy's got glasses, safety glasses on. You know he's a scientist. Um, there is one addition to this that we're going to have in labs this semester. Does anyone know what it is? Masks, yep. So if you're in a lab this semester, you will need to have a mask. I believe that you can get one from the UC library uh, by showing your student card. Um, I assume it's suitably branded. Yes, I hope so. All right. So, um, yes, I joke. You, you will be doing these things. I'm not sure about staring at blue, blue liquid, uh, but, but you will be doing lots of these activities. There was actually a study. Uh, communication in science, we'll talk, I know, this is what happens when academics talk. There, um, there was a study in that I'll go across in communication in science as well um, that showed that you will be more effective or your science will be taken more seriously as a communicator if you look the part. It's very demoralising really, isn't it? So if you chuck a lab coat on, who knows, put a stethoscope on. We never, we never wear one during our course, but may as well to look the part and your science will apparently be taken more seriously by the general public. <laughs> So you'll do plenty of this, um, but you'll also be out in the field. You'll be splashing around in water, in streams. You'll be crashing around in mud. You'll be in actual workplaces as well during the, during the course. You'll be getting a real taste of what you love. So within the School of Science, we have a number of different degrees. Um, some of you are doing the Bachelor of Science. You can study a range of things. Look, that person's branched out into red liquids as well as blue. We'll go into a little bit of de more detail the Bachelor of Science in a minute. Um, then we also have the Bachelor of Medical Science and Biomedical Science, and I have unfairly shortened them into one title there, um, principally because they tend to take a lot of the same units. There is also the Bachelor of Applied Science and Forensic Studies, which I imagine looks a little bit like that. But you, of course, chose correctly, and you are doing a Bachelor of Environmental Science or Bachelor of Science majoring in Environmental Science. Good choice. So in terms of that Bachelor of Science, as I say, the flexibility is the key to our BSI. And you can, range, you can study a range of things, but you need to make sure that you've got at least two of those majors, so two times 18 credit points, 36 credit points, uh, and one science minor. That leaves a balance to make up your 72 credit points of, um, of 24, okay? So that means that you can use those leftover credit points to study whatever you want. If you want to go and study the history of ice cream or um, prehistorical computing on the other side of the faculty, uh, sorry, campus, then you're very welcome to do that. I suggest strongly that you don't, that you um, complement it with something related to your studies um, in science. So you might do another science major or you might do something statistical or you might do something to do with IT or psychology is another um, popular option. And it's something that actually complements your other studies. In terms of the Bachelor of Environmental Science, I will declare a bias here. My background is in freshwater ecology and I very much um, 
advice towards it. However, you will study a range of different systems in the Bachelor of Environmental Science. There is a focus throughout on what we call experiential learning, uh, which is about just getting your hands dirty, actually getting out there. So certainly field trips, as, as um, pictured here, you learn how to bog and unbog a car, you learn how to um, sit around on a rocky platform. We should perhaps get some, I should update some of these photos. For a start, they look like they were taken in 1994, but also they, um, they sort of, you will be more involved than this makes it seem. You probably won't be trying climbing many trees either. That's the bottom left hand corner. But you get the idea. You're out and about, you're in it, and you're doing it. The other type of experiential learning you'll have is work integrated learning, which I'll touch on in a second. In terms of our field based program, you will experience various field trips embedded within your uh, different units. One of my favorite ones is there's a trip called Cozy to Coast, where you go up to the top of Mount Kosciuszko and you drive to the coast over the weekend, and obviously you're, you're camping together, and you stop at different ecosystems on the way, and you take data, you talk about landscape, you talk about the different ecosystems in which you're embedded. What a cool way to do science. Um, I said out west, the third dot point there, Go out. we go out to Willandra, so the arid zone, uh, western New South Wales, and we spent a week out there in second year doing various um, little studies. Really, really cool program. Um, unfortunately, it suffered a little bit for COVID last year. However, at the, however, at the moment, everything looks in place. We're gearing up uh, to get back out into the field this year, which will be fantastic. So you'll have some field trips this year, but mostly they'll be in your second year of study. So you'll be fine by then. There is also work integrated learning. Here's a picture of some people walking and talking like you will do at work. Um, I, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure this is a very great photo representative of what you'll be doing in environmental science. You will do a placement at some point during your um, time here. And now that placement might be with Parks and Conservation at a Tibbin Villa might be out in the Magi in the National Park. It might be in an office uh, working on policy stuff because that's more your bent. It might be in a laboratory. The idea is that come your final semester, we will help you find a placement in industry or government that suits what, where you want to go with your career. So you get that first taste before you get there. It also allows you to sometimes get a little bit of foot in the door when it comes to applying for gigs the next year. Research project is also on this list because an alternative or an addition, if you like, to doing the um, short internship in a workplace is to actually run uh, a little research project yourself. And you do that one-on-one -on -one with an academic here at UC and you spend a semester running your own little research project, um, which is a super cool experience to get before you even leave uni. So that's down the line, but this will you'll have work integrated learning embedded throughout your course. You'll come across it before the year is out. All right, in terms of your actual course and what it looks like, this is what our Bachelor of Environmental Science looks like. Who is enrolled in these four units? Chem 1A, Concepts in Biology, Math Methods, and Communication and Science. Okay, majority of you, that's cool. And you will find, Excellent, thank you uh, to the virtual room participants as well. You will find that um, you'll, find a, you'll see a lot of similar people during your first semester, as well as your second, and then you'll start diversifying and spreading out into, into different things. As part of your Bachelor of Environmental Science, you will take eight plus two core units. Okay? So there are technically eight core units, which are those seven first year units I've boxed there, as well as tackling environmental challenges in the bottom right hand corner. The plus two is because um, environmental conflict and engagement is what we call a co-requisite of tackling environmental challenges. So even though it's not um, strictly in your study plan as a core unit, you have to take it. Co-requisite means you need to do it at the same time as tackling environmental challenges. You also need to do one of those workplace uh, integrated units. Um, which is what that restricted choice there refers to in that, the bottom right hand corner. You'll complete two majors, I mentioned before, Applied Ecology and Water Science. Um, there are various units, there are, well, six units in each for the majors, but they overlap. They overlap with each other and they overlap with your core units as well. So what that means is that you actually end up with a balance of open electives. So you have, what have I got there, six open electives that you can choose to fill from anywhere in the university. Okay, so if you want to go and do um, basket weaving or contemporary dance, you can. If you, but um, 
you're better off choosing units that are already related to environmental science. So not listed here are things like uh, analytical chemistry, genetics and genomics, um, molecular and cellular biology, uh, chemistry 1B, biochem, things like this. Okay? Lots of different options. You may also take psychology units here. You may take IT, data science, indigenous perspectives units, a fantastic complement um, to our course. I found one uh, in the Faculty of Arts and Design called Dirt and Cleaning, Philosophies and Techniques. You can consider that if you want. Um, actually, I lied. It's, it's no longer offered, sadly. Um, point is that there is an open choice here for you. However, it can get complex. If you want to start, you've got your heart set on studying environmental and forensic genetics in third year, we need to work out how you're going to build up the prerequisites in order to get to that point. Okay? So at that point, you need to come and speak to a course advisor and discuss where you want to go with your course and potentially how that will lead into careers afterwards. I strongly suspect that most of you are fine for semester one because you're doing something like on the board. However, I encourage you to go and get course advice before the end of the year and okay? before the end of second semester. You should some, have some idea about where you want to go and um, seek course advice for plotting out that, the map of how you're going to get there. All right, I mentioned before that in the first instance for that course advice, you need to go to the student centre. So I'm building one for a, uh, a drop-in session. However, you can also email our education, um, faculty education team, which is that email address there. And if escal escalation is required, then it comes to myself on the call. Uh, by escalation, that means that you want to do something funky. So you want to take a unit overseas, which is a possibility. Go speak to study abroad. Um, if you want to take a year uh, unit overseas, then you need to speak to one of our program directors. If you want to take unit B instead of A and you have a really good reason for it, that requires an academic call and so you'll, you'll be escalated to a program director in those instances. Okay? But that's basically the path you should follow in order to get a course advice. All right, I believe um, that, is it Faki Book? No, Facebook uh, is a popular website these days. I, uh, this is apparently the, um, not apparently, the, the faculty has a Facebook page and as well as um, a Twitter account. I encourage you to follow the, um, both of those. Lastly, um, there is after this a welcome lunch, the Dean's welcome lunch, um, which I encourage you all to attend. I have been asked to remind you that you must be registered the note I got had that written in bold and underlined. So, um, and sorry, and capitalized as well. So it's very important. You must be registered to attend, in all seriousness. Yeah, I can't just let you in at the gate. Um, so if you haven't registered, go to your email. All students will have been sent an email um, asking them to register for the Dean's Welcome Lunch. Okay, so um, find that email. And if you can't get a ticket, it means that there are no, no tickets available any longer, okay? They're at capacity. I think I've ticked off what I was required to say there. Um, Katie, myself, and Maddie will be around for the next 10 minutes before the lunch if you want to ask us questions or if you want to sign up for the Environmental Science Society. I don't know if I'm putting Maddie in the, on the spot there. That's fine? Okay, excellent. Excellent, she's got stickers. Okay, excellent. Wonderful to meet you all. Please come up and say hello. Please ask us any questions. Thank you. Katie, do you mind stopping the recording just so we... Thank you. That way your inquiry doesn't have to be broadcast to the world.